Rig loads such that you prevent any part from shifting or dislodging during the lift. Attaching the load should be conducted as follows. You should wear gloves when handling wire rope. Ensure hoist chains or ropes are kept free of kinks or twists. Ensure hoist chains or ropes are not wrapped around the load. Ensure the load is attached to the load block. Remember, rope on a winding drum must be securely fastened to the drum. You must ensure that the number of wraps remaining at all times on a drum complies with the manufacturer's specifications for the rope and the drum, or if there are no manufacturer's specifications, is not less than five full wraps. When using two or more slings on a load, ensure that they are all made from the same material. Ensure there are no kinks or twists in the sling legs, and that they are secure and the hook latch is fully closed. Ensure the load is rigged properly with the hook directly above the center of gravity. Ensure the hoist line is plumb, otherwise the load will sway. Don't allow the hoist to become slack. All crane booms have deflection, and this must be considered when rigging a load. When the load is lifted off the ground, the boom will deflect, causing the radius to increase. Increased radius may cause overloading of the crane. The boom angle before lifting should be slightly greater than desired to account for boom deflection. Ensure the path of travel is clear of all obstructions and that the entrance and egress routes will not become blocked by the lifting device or load during the progress of the lift. Prior to lifting the load, the operator must make certain that the load, sling, attachments, lifting devices and the load block are unobstructed. Always check the brakes when you initially lift the load. The hoist motor may be able to lift the load, but you must also ensure that the brakes can stop and hold the load. To ensure the brakes can stop and hold the load, you should initially lift the load just slightly off the ground and stop to see that it holds its position. Keep hands away from pinch points as slack is being taken up. Suspended loads should be securely slung and properly balanced before they are set in motion. Loads must never pass directly over personnel. You are responsible to ensure the area is clear of personnel before hoisting. Keep the load under control and as close to the floor or grade as possible at all times. Never work under a suspended load. Where personnel may be endangered by a rotating or swaying load, use one or more tag lines to prevent uncontrolled motion. Ensure you have adequate space to allow for unexpected movement during the progress of the lift. Cranes must never be used to pull the load into position under a crane. Loads must be safely landed and properly blocked before being unhooked and unslung. Make sure that everyone stands clear when loads are being lifted, lowered and freed of slings. Remember, as slings are withdrawn, their hooks may catch under the load and suddenly fly loose. Ensure you use adequate blocking for load placement. Cribbing generally refers to specially cut and or assembled pieces of wood used to support raised objects as ground pads or bases. It is a support system commonly used to allow work under pipe. Tipping accidents have occurred as a result of inadequate cribbing. This often occurs when soil is misjudged and isn't sufficiently compacted or it's too close to excavations or backfilled areas. To ensure the cribbing will adequately support the load, it must be set up on firm and level ground. It shouldn't be stacked any higher than the length of the wood used and should be dry and free of grease or other slippery substances. Ensure you distribute the load over enough area to provide stability and that the cribbing is strong and solid enough to support the load in all areas where such support is needed. Three commonly used types of cribbing include wedge, box, and crotch cribbing. Wedge cribbing is used for adjusting a bow or sag in the middle of the pipe. Box cribbing is used to set up pipe for work on one end. For example, when welding pipe, the box cribbing is laid at the opposite end of the pipe from the task site. Crotch cribbing is commonly used to support the pipe at the end where the work will take place. It is constructed to prevent the pipe from rotating and will support the weight of the pipe evenly. Dunnage is another common term that refers to a supporting temporary framework using loose materials. Examples include pallets, 
crating, packing blocks, drums, cases, load boards, pallet collars, and skids. Before placing a load on dunnage, ensure that the material is strong enough to support the load. A successful lift occurs when the load is placed where it's needed, nothing is damaged, and nobody gets hurt.